Paul says to the church of Corinth, Have I committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Verse 8, I robbed other churches taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia, supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. And so note these passages where Paul says that he had received wages from churches. In other words, more than one congregation. More than one church was supporting him in the work that he was doing. The Bible does not tell us how those funds were delivered. But Paul tells us the church in Philippi communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving. This indicates a keeping track of the funds given for his work. I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson that every month I record all of the contributions that have come in from the various congregations and individuals that support me. And I also keep track of the financial expenditures and send that in a monthly support. Well, here the church in Philippi was communicating with them in giving and receiving. Paul also received these funds to preach the gospel in places other than the place who contributed the money. And it does not make a bit of difference from a scriptural standpoint whether a church sends money directly to the preacher or he receives it via his overseeing congregation. Regardless, it is the church preaching the gospel. But as I mentioned, many times brethren feel more comfortable sending a contribution to an overseeing congregation so that they know it will be accounted for. The idea of oversight in regard to the work of the church. Therefore, we understand from the scriptures, preaching of the gospel is under the oversight of the elders of the congregation. But there are multiple scriptural ways to convey that money to the worker. Objections made are not in regard to the preaching of the gospel but the way the funds are secured and sent. There must be a means to convey the funds from the church to the worker in the field. Whether it is a congregation like Philippi, giving and receiving funds and then passing them along to Paul, or congregation sending funds directly to the worker in the field. The Bible does not give any set path in this matter. Churches can cooperate in evangelism in the same way they can cooperate in benevolence. Note three passages that Paul mentions in this regard, or that the New Testament reports in this regard. In Galatians 2, verses 9 and 10. Galatians 2, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9, And when James, Cephas, and John who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. When Paul went preaching, was he concerned with benevolence? He was. He collected funds from the churches in Macedonia and Achaia to travel to Jerusalem to get to the church there. He was preaching as he went along, but he was also helping the poor. Jesus says in Matthew 4, verses 23 and 24, or the Bible records, that Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Well, what was he doing while he was preaching and teaching concerning the kingdom? healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So Jesus went about doing good, Acts 10, 38. He was preaching the gospel, but he was also considerate 
of those who had physical needs. When he sent out the, the, the apostles to preach, he said, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely ye have received, freely give. Paul received funds in his missionary journeys to take to the Christians in Jerusalem. And in Romans 15, 25 and 27, Paul records, But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily. And their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partaker of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. And so it was Paul who was evangelizing. It was Paul who was paying attention to benevolence. And he was re receiving funds from the churches to accomplish that work. <clears throat> now, Riley mentioned in the Bible class concerning the American Christian Missionary Society. It was mentioned yesterday by Brother Crow as well. In the 19th century, there were brethren like Alexander Campbell and others who saw the great need to evangelize the world and we were not evangelizing the world. We went through a period of time, uh, sometime in the early 20th century, the first couple of decades of the 20th century, where we had people going to various places to preach the gospel. George Benson and others went over to China. We had some that were going to uh, Japan and Hong Kong and other places, but not very many. It wasn't until after World War II when our GIs started coming back from the war. And while they had been in places in Europe and Asia, they saw the multitudes of people who had not yet heard the gospel. And so it was through the influence and the efforts of brethren who had been overseas in the military to come back and say, we need to start preaching the gospel to people outside of our country. But back in the 19th century, we were not doing a lot of overseas missions. And so there was an attempt to establish the American Christian Missionary Society. But it was doing the work of the church for the church. Instead of the church being the pillar and ground of the truth, instead of the elders of the congregations overseeing the work of the congregation, instead of congregations working and cooperating together to help spread the gospel, the idea of the American Christian Missionary Society was, you send money to us, and then we'll collect that money, and then we'll send missionaries out. And the idea, of course, was that the missionary society required churches to contribute. When we work together, when we co cooperate, sometimes the congregation will support a missionary, sometimes they won't. They have the choice, they have the decision as to whether or not they want to support some particular work. But with the American Christian Missionary Society, it was required of churches to support it. And it would be the missionary society that would decide how the funds would be used and not the church. If a work in the 21st century follows the pattern of the old missionary society, it is not following the New Testament teaching in regard to oversight and the work of the church. And if there is a work that is being overseen by an ownership, but that congregation becomes unfaithful, we no longer are required to support that work. Because we're working autonomously, we have, auton we have autonomy, self-rule, in the local congregations, that's the way God set it up. But we have to work together in order to spread the gospel to all the world. Is it within the financial means of the Richmond Hill Church of Christ to carry the gospel to every person on the face of the earth? Well, you and I know, both know it's not. But what can we do? We can work together. Congregations can work together to evangelize locally and in other parts of the world. 
Ephesians 3, 20 and 21 says, Now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Two of the many dangers facing the church. Number one, binding where God has not bound. Number two, loosing where God has not loosed. One is just as serious as the other. Thomas Warren said, you will lose your soul by empty doctrine just as you will for being a liberal. And he illustrates it by standing on top of a, a mesa, a plateau or a mountain. You go off either side, you're going to die. We've got to stay on the right path that leads to heaven. We do not want to go to the right or the left, but we want to live our lives in keeping with God's Word. We have a re tremendous responsibility to carry the gospel to the whole world. It is much easier to just raise objections as to why we cannot do that than digging in and helping and working together to do God's work in accordance with His will. May God help us to be against the wrong but for the right. And may we rightly divide the word of truth in order to know what is right and what is wrong. Let us make sure we are doing what is right and then let us go full speed ahead in fulfilling the mission of Christ. Luke 19, 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. For she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Let's preach the gospel in every scriptural way that we can. And let's help as many people as we possibly can to hear the gospel, to believe it with all of our heart. To repent of our every sin. To confess our faith in Christ. And then to be immersed in water. So that the precious blood of Christ can wash away our sins. And we can rise to walk in newness of life. And then as a new creature in Christ. Having put off the old man and put on the new man. No longer being conformed to this world. But being transformed by the renewing of your mind. We put the Lord first in our lives. We walk in the light as He is in the light. We continue to confess our sins as we fall short of God's plan. And then as we continue to do that, through the grace and mercy of God, and through our obedience to His will, we can have a home throughout eternity in heaven. We're only going to be here for a few years. And then, where will we be in eternity? Let's help as many people as we possibly can to go to heaven. I hope that includes you and me. Let us help as we can as together we